the doors of the Snowburn Lounge are now open. Come on in, grab yourself a seat. Sit back and listen to real people talk about real things. Sports, politics, social events, and cigars as well. So, grab your favorite cocktail along with that stogie that you love. Sit back and take a listen. Hope you enjoy. All right, well, again, thank you and welcome everybody to the Slow Burn Lounge. I'm your host, Mo. And again, we meet once a month to talk with real people, talk about real shit. Uh, today, as always, I have a guest panel with me. I don't like to personally give people their introductions and accolades. I want them to brag about themselves because me, I'll probably lie. So with that being said, <laughs> we're going to start with the ladies. We're going to work our way around the room. Everybody, please give a slight introduction to the people so they know who they're speaking to and know who put a face or a voice with a face. <laughs> yeah, that's you. I always hate to be first. But um, my name is Felicia. In business, I go by Cherry. In my other business, I go by the Berry Cherry Bomb One. I am a licensed cosmetologist as well as a pole dance instructor and a dominatrix teacher. Yeah, y'all get all that they don't. Oh, I. First, I'm gonna move my seat. <laughs> she got the handcuffs. That's what I'm, that's what I'm worried about. Look, careful what I say. I'm Demetrius. Uh, I'm an educator, college professor, and co-owner of Scar Boy, uh, Scar, man, Scar Boy, Scar Girl accessories. Yeah, we got a, we got your cases, your problems they give. We got our things for the ladies too, because we know our ladies love to smoke cigars, so we want to have things as ladylike for them. So. Y'all check us out. Y'all see us at shopcigarboy.com. Hello, my name is Gloria Hicks. I am a registered nurse. I've been a registered nurse for over 22 years, and I'm also doing uh, nursing consulting for uh, residential facilities, and I'm also a care coordinator at Loyola University Medical Center, and I'm also a singer. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I'm impressive. Uh, hats off to you for being a nurse. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hi, my name is Deanna Hall. I'm in the education field. So, Felicia, you got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. All right. Is it? Yes. Oh, good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Wallace. I'm CEO of Time Key Blessed Realty 7 LLC. I'm a real estate investor. My name is Anthony. I'm in transportation. I've uh, been doing that for over 22 years, and I'm um, out here to support my buddy with his podcast. All right, that's good. All right, there we go. We got the introductions out there. Now that we got the introductions out there, let's go on and get into this, okay? Uh, one of the things, and again, the family that I assembled today, uh, I think most I know most of you almost on the personal level, uh, even though we know each other on the personal level from Facebook. Uh, but uh, we, there's been certain topics that I think you all have invested interest in and that we want to kind of touch on today. And one of the things that has been plaguing me last year, and I don't want to get into a slumber type atmosphere, but last year I had the unfortunate uh, opportunity to lose my mom, my brother. Basically, last year was just the worst year for me ever in my life. I lost six important people in my lifetime. And when my mom passed, uh, she passed from cancer. Uh, I also had a younger sister that passed away seven years ago, prior, well, 10 years ago prior to that, from the same cancer. And I, I thought that this was something that we don't get to talk about the after effects, what happens afterwards when people go through these transitions, how that affects the family, how that affects you personally and things like that. Uh, one of the things, and men will touch on this as well, in the black community, especially with black men, is we have a tendency to shy away from the doctors and getting the required physical that we need to have in order to keep ourselves going. Uh, I want to touch on that too as we get further in the conversation. But basically my my whole deal is with this, I was I was angry. I was angry. And I'll say why I was angry. I wasn't angry at God, wasn't angry at God, wasn't angry at my mom. I was angry at 
the way cancer treated her and my sister. I saw two vibrant women in my life, feisty, vibrant, man, just almost went on down to nothing. And that was very, very discouraging for me. Uh, as much as I carry this persona that I'm very strong and, you know, uh, pretty much uh, macho type, uh, that affected me wholeheartedly. Uh, again, one of the things when I said I was angry, I was angry at society. And the reason why I was angry at society is because we're able to find cures for everything else in the world. But that's the one forbidden taboo that nobody wants to touch on. Uh, during the times that I was taken to appointments, the doctors would always bring up certain medications they would try to implement on her. And they, my mom didn't want any of that. Uh, one of the profound statements my mom made before she passed was she asked God to allow her to be on earth for 76 years. And she lived to be 84. And the first thing she said was, I was living on somebody else's time. So that always going to stick and resonate in my head throughout my life, remaining in my life. But what I want to do is, again, Touch on how it affects, or have you all been, if anybody here has been involved in that, if you're coming from the nurses' bill, I'm sure you've seen it. How do people respond to that? Or how, how do you respond? How do you keep your composure? Well, um, I would say that I, I myself, I've always found myself pretty unique in that situation because of my, and I'm not promoting religion on anybody or whatever, but my relationship with God and my personal relationship with God. And meaning that when I went into nursing it, it, and, and seeing death and stuff like that, a lot of people can't handle that. True. Because they're, but for me, it was like this 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 um, peace that I had because it was knowing that surely death is a part of life. So I, and, and I know that I'm not God. I know I'm not the highest being. I know that I can't control anybody's life. It was always easier for me to kind of put it in a place of um, that uh, I can only do so much. And in the medical field, you find a lot of people, doctors, nurses, anybody who feel like they have, they that they, they can do something, they can just make it happen. But I, I had to learn how to contain that and say, you know, I can only do so much. Because you'll go crazy and hold that guilt on your head like, I could have saved them, I could have saved them. I can't save anybody. I can barely save myself. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't maintain myself. It's, to me, it's only by grace that keeps me. But a lot of people, I've, I've seen it in there where people, doctors, are li literally going to pieces because they couldn't save a patient. So I, that was my way of, you know, just realizing that I can only, if I know what I know, I can do the best that I can. But then I also found talking to my patients, and people think that's weird. I talk to my patients and I ask them, well, how are you feeling? What, what is it that you want? Are you tired? Are you, you want to fight? Tell me, because a lot of times people hold on for us. Yeah. They yeah. don't, they don't, it, 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 yeah. they, we are so selfish. We, oh. we, we, ah, you, come on, you can do this. I had a 96 year old lady who was like, I just wish they would just leave me alone. I can't say it, and I just, something just in me told me, maybe be bold enough to tell the doctor that her family walked in the hallway. She just wants y'all to leave her alone. She's 96. What What are you going to do? She's 96. So we have to, you have to make a peace with yourself that you can only maintain this. I can't, I can't, if, if, if she don't have the fight, I can't make her fight. I, I can give her all the medicine in the world. If she don't have no more fight, or if it's, I have to make it comfortable for her to say, I'm going to agree to it, whatever you want to do. If you want me to move the world, I'll try to. But if you just want me to just, if you just want peace, that's what it is. So a lot of times it, it just comes down to our own inner peace, uh, how we feel, how we deal with stuff. Uh, and, 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 and that's a deeper, that's a whole deeper thing. It's, it, even with just things that we deal with on a daily basis, is how we feel on the inside. How do you feel? How do you feel if you were in that situation? Are you scared to die? Would you be ready to die? Would you want to suffer? Would you? Well, how? And I, I mean, I think 
it, it takes a um, a level of just, like I said, your inner peace and just the love. I, I genuinely just love people and, and, and I just wouldn't want nobody to go through that suffering for me or to, you know, I, I just want them to be comfortable with what they want. So that, that was the whole thing. And a lot of times I'm there for my friends, I'm there for patients. I, because I just have this peace that death doesn't bother me. I lost my father, I lost sisters. I, I, out of 12 brothers and sisters, I only got three brothers and one sister left. And through it all, I've always been the one, like, okay, you know, this is that. This is what we have to deal with. But it's, you know, it's just that thing. You just have to have that piece. And so that's what has, has helped me. And I'm not saying everybody's going to do that because everybody loves a different way. Everybody has their own way of uh, dealing with their situations. But I think when it comes to a loved one or someone close to you, you have to think about it. Is it, is it more selfish to keep them there? Is it? Okay. Would you want to keep them there? Or would you just want them to go peacefully without pain? Because that was like, when it came to my father, my mother was like, that's your decision. I had to put him on a morphine drip. I didn't want him to be suffering in pain and, you know, the, 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 the agony of the death. And, and I mean, the actually, if you actually been there when somebody's dying, that's an agony. Yeah. That's an agony. And then, don't let them not be DNR and you want them resuscitated. You do not know how much pain that is when they're already sick and you got a 200 pound man pounding in your chest right. and somebody trying to shove a tube down your throat and people sticking you in your arm that is so brutal 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 i tell anybody that and so like i said you have to think of i've had them for so long i've loved them and that death day is just one day you had them more days alive than you had them dead oh damn hold up say that again and that day is just one day. You probably had thousands and thousands and thousands of days with them alive. So try to take those thousands and thousands and thousands of days and those memories better than that one day of when they died. That, that is. I, actually, I, I'm probably to the point where, like, how you follow that up? Mic drop. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that, that's basically a mic drop. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that perspective. Actually, you you made it a lot clearer for me uh, because you're right. I, I was being selfish. I, I, that just never came. That's the that's the that's your superwoman. Yeah, yeah. Who wants this? You don't never want to see your superwoman right, like that. That's right. your superwoman. And uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, anybody else want to add to that? I lost my brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> I lost uh, my adult life. You know, when you were growing up, I lost my grandparents when I was a child, and it was painful, but I lost my brother, and my only brother, and uh, I think life is beautiful, and life has a gift, and that gift is time and memories. Mm -hmm. We, in the spiritual world, we talk about heaven, we talk about eternity, but we talk about in the sense that a person going to live eternity in heaven. No. My brother's still living eternally because I'm keeping his memories alive. Right. Your people deal with grievance in different ways. And I suggest you keep that, that you got that person forever because you're still alive. Yeah. So that person, I'm seeing, you're seeing some portions of my brother in me. Anybody that you lost, I might be looking at your grandfather's eyes. Mm -hmm. I might be looking at your grandmother's nose. It lives on and we have to deal with that. Some people deal with grievance by having foundations. Mm -hmm. By doing things like for me, with my brother, his birthday is February 12th. I fast for 48 hours for his birthday, mm -hmm. for his memory. And I do things and memorize them. Like you started this podcast, you brought up your mother. You understand? You can take Kanye West, his album, his name, Donna, after his mother. Mm -hmm. Why don't she pass? Not everybody's hearing Donna, and his daddy got his mother living. Do what you do. So, like she said, time is a very special thing, and we memory you'll never, never die. Want to add to that? Yeah, I'm gonna speak on um, behalf of um, losing a mother myself, mm -hmm. um, and I lost my mom when I was 33 years old. And I thought you were 36. You said what? I thought you were 36. I'm 50. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
See, I gave you that necklace. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I lost her at 30. Uh, I was 33, and she was only 52. Mm -hmm. So the things that I, I live my life in reality, mm -hmm. not regret. So um, I learned that first that my mother was one of the strongest women in the world mm -hmm. when I used to think she was weak. Right. And the reason why I said that is because when she was dying, she knew we would still live and she just wanted us to continue to live. Like no matter what's happening to me, y'all just live and take care of yourself and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And um, it, was, it, was, it was a learning process. I learned what a mother really was. I've learned that, um, like you said, you have to accept what's going on because mm -hmm. you can't change it. Mm -hmm. I knew the medicines were working. Mm -hmm. I knew whatever surgeries they gave her was okay, but sh the cancer that was in her mm -hmm. was Aggressive. long past what she could fight. Mm -hmm. And I knew she was fighting. Um, so I didn't want to, everything that you mentioned, like the resuscitation, when they, my mother asked me, well, what do you think about the um, DNR? I'm like, you're not gonna put that off on me. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, this is your life, mm -hmm. not mine. I would be here for you with whatever decision that you make, but I can't make that. And I didn't want to be selfish about it. Because yes, I want my mother to live forever, mm -hmm. but I don't want her living with cancer and suffering and you know, going to the hospitals and she one day she took the bus and the bus was late and had made her pay extra. Oh, she wow. felt like, and then he called her poor oh. because she was skinny and you know, losing yeah. you know, all this weight and everybody like here. She was like, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is he was late and I shouldn't have to pay. Mm -hmm. And then now you're trying to embarrass me. Mm -hmm. And she felt so bad that day and even somebody else said, oh, what diet you're on? You're losing so much weight. My mother died probably like a month later. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, the, you know, it's like you can't judge a book by its cover. We went through a lot. And then my sister. My sister always was the strong one, you know, the smart one and all this stuff. And I'm like, and she was just a wreck. And I had to tell her, there's nothing that you can do. Finally, I had to be the strong one. There's nothing, you cannot fight it for her. You, she's done the best that she could to fight it. And she wanted to feed my mother. This was the worst day. She wanted my mother to eat all this healthy food. And my mother was tired. Mm -hmm. She she wanted to be happy. Like, she, um, she, she wanted to be happy. And my sister's like, no, she needs eggs and she needs this. And, my mother, she cried one day, I fixed the eggs because my sister. And she said, you said you wasn't going to give me no more eggs and start crying like a baby. And I'm like, oh. wow. I had called my sister. I said, mama wants sugar on a spoon. That's what she did. Exactly. She gets exactly. sugar on a spoon. Exactly. I don't care if I got to freeze it in the freezer. If it's good, um, you know, water down, whatever. Yeah. Yes. So I gave her uh, some ice cream. And some frosted flakes. Those are her two favorite and things. She and happy. she ended up dying three days after wow. that. And, you know, she stopped eating after mm -hmm. that. So I was happy that she had at least had something that she enjoyed yeah. because I couldn't imagine life without her not even having anything exactly. that she enjoyed in her last days. Exactly. And so then another good thing is uh, she waited. My sister bought a car. Everybody was mad because how she going to buy a car when your mama died? I'm like, because she got to get here, she needs a car anyway because her car messed up. Yeah. So why spend the money on a rental car? Right. She bought the car, came to Chicago from Atlanta, and my mother took her last heart, her, her last heartbeat stopped like 45 minutes after my sister wow. came. So you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you have to just, like I said, live in reality, yep. not in regret or what you cannot fix. Yes. You know, yep. you just got to... And like seeing my mother go through that and not worry about herself and only worry about her children, that's why I learned to eat better. Mm -hmm. I do everything in moderation. I like cigars, but I don't smoke anything often. Yeah. You know, I don't drink often. 
but I like my liquor. Yeah, you know, right. I yeah, love yeah. food. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But you know, there's sometimes I I went I did a 21 day fast, no food, only water and uh, cold pressed juices. Didn't chew anything for 20 you know one day. So I do these things so that I can live. And like you mm -hmm. said, their memory lives as long as you live. Amen. Yes. You know, so that's all I want to talk. That was enough, sister. Appreciate you saying <laughs> that. I mean, that's that's the thing I look at too. You know, everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. You know, and it transitions from or it takes us and make us who we are. You know, uh, what one of the fond memories, and of course I let you all other guys jump in too. One of the fondest memories I never forget, besides that statement my mom made, is, and I was talking to you on the phone that day. And she, she, yeah, she was pissed nails. off about me ch ch chopping the nails off. <laughs> 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 and she said, either you go put the nail on the phone, then you go do my nail. And I told him I'd call him back. So, but as soon as I finished that, I thought she had dozed off. Uh -huh. And I'm sitting there watching the UFC fights and on TV. And I'm like I said, I'm kind of like in my zone watching this. And the next thing I hear her in the background saying, Get his ass, get him, get him. And I'm like, <laughs> I look over there, I'm like, I thought you were asleep. He's like, no, nah, I want him to kick his ass. <laughs> he should be beating on that man like that. And I'm like, okay, well, but that, that again, those are the memories that I take any time that I felt myself going into this slight depression. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say this, as strong as I uh, carry myself, uh, there are times that I do find myself. I, uh, at one point, like I said, I, I found it hard for me to, it was a fight for me to get out of bed every day. It really was, it was a fight. And uh, I think a lot of my, a lot, a lot of people that's close to me didn't know this. Like, because that's the persona that I put out there. But it was a hard fight for me to get out of bed every day. Because uh, like I said, that was definitely a trying year for me last year. But I think it was to test me, to bring me to where I am. Day. And I think it's going to carry me to where I'm going to be in the future. Yeah. So that's one of the things that I try to take as well with it as well. Um, but I ain't going to knock by it. Didn't you guys want to jump in and say something on this? What's been said, been said. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what, one of the things, and I'm going to to touch in on this, but anybody else, I got some experience on this as well. It, okay, so two years ago, we had this COVID thing going. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the things that I found to be very heartening was the individuals that was transitioning and their family members couldn't get up there to see them. Mm -hmm. how, how did that, <coughs> did that work on you guys as staff as well as the families? Because I know uh -oh. that, I, I would tell you, that's why a lot of people got mental issues right now. Wow. <laughs> I'm serious. Wow. Wow. I, people have left the health field in droves. Droves, I'm talking about, um, one, it was the hours mm -hmm. for the healthcare people, the hours, because, you know, people people started getting, the, the healthcare workers themselves was getting COVID. Right. They couldn't come to work. Then it, it, it just started snowballing. But just imagine you already work like eight, now you 16, some people working 20 hours, even though that's not legal, but if you didn't have no staff, right. well, you, you, you gowned up, you got on masks, people having panic attacks, people, I'm serious, more suicide than healthcare, because you're sitting there, you got people wanting to get into their loved ones, oh well, and they, in this, at the beginning, they didn't have a video, the video business. Yeah. It was just like, oh, I got to call and tell you, your mom died. You know, right, oh, right. I got to call and tell you they passed away. It wasn't nothing. So it it took its toll because, you know, we, honestly, if you're in the hospital, depending on what department, it, even if you work in the ICU, you don't see more than one death a week. It's not like you're seeing people, oh, I came to work, somebody died. Oh, I came to work, somebody died. It don't really happen like that. Um, most people, we have the honor of sending them home or sending them somewhere else to, you know, rehab or whatever. It's not all that death, but just think, now you at work, and a patient that was sitting there talking to you on Monday, now they on a, on a tube on Wednesday, and they dead by Friday. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And that's how quick it was going. So, and it's, and it's like, you don't even get, like, usually having somebody die, oh, you give their family about a whole shift to come in, visit, yeah. then you get the body together before you go home and send them on their way. Mm -hmm. 
Nope, they die. It's like, okay, we come in, they call them, tag them, bag them. You taking them to the morgue, because guess what? There's other people waiting to get in the ICU or whatever. So it was like, shoot, 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 shoot. So then you also thinking, but then you think about the people who family it is. You can't even hold their hand. You can't even tell them I love you. I can't tell you it's all right. I can't. So that's why we're dealing with a lot of mental issues now. Everything is meditate. Everything is see a counselor. Everything we we have a lot of that now because COVID has really taken its toll on people's psyche. So let me let me put a pin in that. And, yes. and now now I'm getting a little bit angry because from your standpoint in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. Don't you think this government could have did a lot more than what they were doing? I'll, I'll say this. Um, even in everyday operations, it's, it's not as cut and dry as you say, think it is. Right. Because of the simple fact is, it's just like this. Have you ever seen people with, like, found a loophole in anything? So you're trying to do something for their best interest, yeah. but, oh, no, I'm going to sue y'all because, see, that's my right, my liberty, this, that, and other. Right. You can't do that, blah, 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 blah. So the government can do what they want to do, but you got to also worry about these challenges because you see it now. I ain't taking no shot. I ain't wearing no mask. I ain't doing this. I ain't isolating. I, I want to go yes. where I want to yes. go. I'm going to do whatever. Yes. So it was like they, it's like it things don't like like the the vaccine okay everybody wanted the vaccine then like that was too quick mm -hmm. well you just ate about five ten years okay so if we took five ten years you know what i'm saying but but okay so uh, you know what again just help me just talk to me yeah. like i'm a three-year-old okay That's what saying. so so like i said it's just regulations and then you have to think about where you at you got you got state government, you got federal government, you got all this stuff going on, and then also you have to think about like like even like I'll just start and I ain't, and I'm not even bashing Republicans or Democrats or whatever. Okay, you, so why don't you got to be mad? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> That's my guy. Yeah, well, go ahead. And the thing and the thing is is that you know. We, we had this whole, I, I will say government did pay, play some part because it was a pissing contest. Yeah. It was a pissing contest. Yeah. I want to I wanna see if I'm doing the best so my I can keep my constituents happy and, you know, gain some more because it's all about control. So, yeah, we did, I think some of it we did get mixed up in the pissing contest. Right. But also it was a matter of even, like I say, from day to day, day basis, that our hospital could say, they want this right here, but after they they have to make sure that they not making in, any infringements because people are so quick to sue, wow. and it's so much you cannot, it, it, you just can't do it. I mean, I when I came back to Chicago, the stuff that I was doing in Maryland, they weren't doing here, and I look like, well, why are we so behind time? Mm -hmm. But I had to remember where I was at versus being in Illinois. So just like if what they do in Maryland, they don't do it in Illinois. It take it has to take its slow pace get there. So what they doing in Illinois, they might not be doing in Indiana. It takes a slow pace to get around there. So it's, it was it was a combination of things. It was a combination. Um, it was a, a, a event that we've never had before. Okay. We haven't had an event like that since the black, uh, the, like, the Spanish like, flu. Spanish flu. Spanish haven't had nothing Spanish like that. And right. even in Spanish flu, look at all the people that died. Mm -hmm. but, and, and, and then, like I said, now we're more liberated. We got, we got so many things that played in this social media, politics, this, that, blah, blah, blah. I'm not taking this. This is a conspiracy, blah. So, you know, it, it was a combination of things. I won't blame it on one factor, but I will say um, the government uh, the tra transitioning from the Republican to the Democrat, it was all a, bunch, a pissing contest, yeah. which has been going to hell. That's a whole nother story. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. we did all get this. I, 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 I can't. Oh, go ahead. No. Go ahead, bro. I'm going to jump in. I'm on I'm on. And, and, and slightly disagree with you because we have seen this before. Ebola happened. Yeah. Right. Ebola ran through the world. It did not hit the United States because we had a commission set up to deal with it. You had 12 medical mm -hmm. professionals, one staff working 24 7 to prevent a pandemic from happening. On the last president's second day in office, he fired those 12 people. They said if we need them, we can hire them back. Well, guess what? We needed them. Yeah. They need to be there. Ebola hit. Somebody came to the U.S. with Ebola. It was, oh, my God, we have an Ebola case. Yeah. Oh, my God. And it was like three cases. That was it. It got shut down. 
COVID hit, and it was like, huh, huh, well, we had to see, and we'll work around it, and we'll do that. So I, I fully understand the, the regulatory issues that happen when you're dealing with, you know, state and federal governments and all those things. But I know when there was a plan in place before something happened, see, True. before a pandemic right. occurred, mm -hmm. there was a commission, there was a working party to prevent it from happening. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then that was gone, mm -hmm. based on whatever reason. Again, is this? We can talk later. I'm loath to use political parties to separate people because mm -hmm. it's really more about thought and you know, that's different. Mm -hmm. But we had a situation in place that was gone, and then the because this isn't new. For the last 15 years, people have been talking about a possible pandemic, mm -hmm. a possible airborne virus that. This is not new. We know the people who are who think about these things know about that. Right. We didn't create the vaccine in two years or in a year. The vaccine against the coronavirus has been in place. Yes. They've been working on it for the last 25 years. They just ramped it up mm -hmm. because we needed it. So all of that, and then the government's job, nothing else was to come out and message was what it is. And to clear, because people don't know and people still look toward their leaders to give them to lead. Yeah. So whether they were right or wrong, whatever, just come out and saying, hey everybody, let's do this. Let's all agree that we're gonna have people do this. If that statement had been made day one, day three, I think a lot of this would have been gone. And my, my best friend's mm -hmm. sister, I took her to a senior prom. She, was diagnosed with COVID on Friday, and on Sunday she was gone. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Her husband and yeah. two kids didn't go to the funeral because there was only so many allowed at the funeral. Wow. They chose to watch the funeral on Zoom, mm -hmm. so that other family members could go. So in addition to dealing with the loss of their mother, his wife, mm -hmm. they made a decision to say, "I'm going to a selfless decision. I'm going to allow others mm -hmm. to mourn and grieve." And it's a lot because she went to the hospital on Friday. Yeah. And again, they get that yeah. phone call. Yeah. You got that phone call. We're sorry to tell you, your wife is dead. Wow. Yeah. 36. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's wow. Uh, you know, just need to touch on what you said. Uh, that's where I guess my frustration lies because when I say that, it's, it's like, listen, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not in a position to judge anybody. Mm -hmm. But, if we could provide free methadone to addicts and everything else, why not, why not free treatment for cancer patients? Mm -hmm. I mean, everything is about a dollar sign. Well, yeah. you, you got you. It's it's more than you got to think about the whole variety. When they look, when they I was just looking at an article the other day. They were talking about how the billionaires, how much they made and how much minimum wage is, and then talking about how much they make now and how much yeah. minimum wage still is. Yeah. It, it's a whole thing about, I don't care about nobody else but yeah. me, yeah. me and mine. And, and, and they didn't care, they didn't care. They don't care. It's a lot of things that we should be in. Cancer treatment should be one of the things that, we, I mean, how can you go to other countries and people go and get free treatment? When I, when I started, uh, nursing school, and, and I went to college in DuPage uh, for my first degree. Um, in DuPage, a lot of people don't know, DuPage County, all their hospitals tie 10% of their profits into their county. Meaning that if it's somebody in their county who cannot afford health care, yes. they can go ahead and get a treatment for free. And I, the, one of the first people that I encountered was a, 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 a legal, a person that came in illegally that needed a heart transplant, and they provided that service wow. without any strings attached. Wow. So why That's is it that, why, why is stuff true. like that not publicized? See, this, this is, you know, that. thank you for that That's information true. you just assimilated, and I hope people picked up on that. I hope our audience will pick up on that as well and try to do their own research. But that's the kind of things that need to be protected out there. Mm -hmm. You know, again, people without, and which is going to take me into my next segment with us men. Uh, that's the thing about it, because they look at the the, the monetary side mm -hmm. of it and say, well, man, I'm not going, because what they going to do? They're going to go ahead and just 
you know, man, he told me to get a colonoscopy. Man, you ain't finna violate me like that, you know, and all this other things. Yeah. Huh? I have a question. I think it's more of a statement. Yes. Okay. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I'm surprised at the subject because if I'd have known this was going to be a subject, I would probably rant. But mm -hmm. I, I really want to talk about my husband, he died from cancer. So I had never dealt with someone that close to me and experience watching this happen. And I guess my problem, my anger with the whole situation is I was going to all the visits and uh, the doctor treatments and I'm in the hospital and you have to be the strong one and everybody catering to him. And I'm just sitting there. I'm so broken up inside. Mm -hmm. Why they don't have anything to help the the spouse? I needed help. I, I didn't know. I I didn't know emotionally how to handle that mm -hmm. and how to handle my anger. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way it happened was he had passed out at his job a couple of times, mm -hmm. and every time we had took him to the doctor, they and this was you know. Uh, downtown supposed to be the best northwestern they never picked up on that he had cancer wow. so when we did find out that he had cancer the first time you know they went through radiation chemotherapy and then they felt like that he was getting better but then you know all of a sudden he came back so the cancer that he had he probably had like the size of, size of a golf ball in his head, mm -hmm. uh, one in the pancreas, mm -hmm. and then lung. So when it did come back, it came back with rest of mm -hmm. So that one size of a golf ball went to six in the head, mm -hmm. and then it was spread in, like, in the pancreas all over, and then the lung. So they told him he had four months to live. Mm -hmm. So how do you prepare yourself for a person, you know, they have four months to live, and you know all the attention is on the actual person that's dealing with cancer. And I'm not trying to sound selfish, but at the same time, there was no type of anything to prep me or prepare me for what was about to happen to me. And I just feel like they need to have something like a counseling for people or the family that's in the hospice, you know, stay. And, and, and why they don't have that? Well, well, I would tell you one thing that that. What, and what I learned just by being, that is something that a lot of people don't really uh, sure. uh, uh, get to meet until it's almost time. Right, hospice right, right, and what's yeah. the other one? It's palliative care. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. Hospice and palliative care because people have a misconception of if you put somebody on uh, hospice, oh my goodness, yeah. you're trying to kill them. There's a difference between hospice and palliative care. And what a lot of things is, is that people and, and I do understand what you're saying because a lot of people, uh, doctors, us in the healthcare, we, again, it goes to your know, personal. As a per and for me, as a nurse, I, I just love my people. I just love, love, love my patients. I, I just put myself in your shoes. I just be, nobody I can't, that I was exactly, okay. Exactly. You know. No, but it's just, it, it, sometimes it, it, it's, it's just one of those things that, you okay? That's that's right. always, do that. always but, 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 but you know, you know what? I, I get so pissed off yeah. when when people ask me, "Am I okay?" I I get it. I get it. You're you're out for my welfare. Uh -huh. But I'd be like, "Hell no, I ain't okay." And, and I you want know? you to, and I want you to I, tell I, me that. I, 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 I want you to blow my eyebrows back. No, because then that's where I can start. That's where I can start. You gotta say that. But what you gotta get that out. In your situation, when they found out about your husband, when you ask them, "Are they okay?" They say, "Yes, yes." I yeah, but, 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 but I, when I, when I see, but when you I know see, what? Oh, it trips me out that you said that because I my experience that. was at Northwestern too, and they gave me all the help that we needed. For I mean, they have the myself. if you got if you have good insurance, you get the best of the best. Okay? Yeah, we know that. But be real. Let's but, be real, y'all. But at the That's same time, the best, be best of the best wasn't. I didn't know how to handle this. Yeah, right. and, 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 and that's why I'm saying what what to me what I've known because I started off in oncology, um, and then I went to uh, emergency surgery and shock trauma. So that means any crash test dummy 
or anything tragic that happened in the I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm talking about people coming in and their skull is in a bag and they coming in and they're having a heart attack. I'm talking about that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I'm talking about people with guts bubbling like mud. Uh, bubbling mud because they they got holes in their guts. Yeah, I'm talking about that. Wow. But what I'm saying is is that that's what hospice and palliative care is for. They were supposed to send somebody to talk to you. Also, because in hospice and palliative care, they give you somebody that's looking after you, and they give you somebody to look after him because it is something. And I apologize because they dropped the ball. And then also yes. again, the, the, like I say, and I try to toot my own horn. I've been a nurse, and all I ever try to teach new nurses is you have to, you can't come to this job for money. You have to come to this job because this is a selfish, selfless job, and you have to love people. You have to put, that could be my mama, that could be my daddy, that could be me. How would I want somebody to treat mine? And the thing is, is that whoever dropped the ball on you, they should have sent somebody. Even when he first got diagnosed, this should have been somebody for y'all. They should have been some, somebody should have been there for you because that is a hard thing to go through. And you got somebody. Um, and, and I do right now. I talk to people every day on the phone, and I hear people crying like, "Oh, I really need somebody to help me. I'm at home. Husband got dementia. He doing all. I need somebody." But wait to help a minute. I was sick too, but yeah. I was hiding. Yeah. I needed to have a surgery, yeah. and I knew something was wrong, with him, yeah. but I was denying it because all attention had to be focused on him. Uh -huh. But I, after you know the burial, I had went to work, and I knew, uh -huh. you know, I started you know peeing black black pee. Uh -huh. I knew something was wrong, yeah. so I immediately called my parents to come get me, uh -huh. and then they found out, you know, my my whole gallbladder. Yeah. And, you know, I had all sorts. I was stressed. Yeah, you I was stressed. stressed out. I was stressed. Yeah. Out. Can I? Can I put it? And I was so happy to go in the. Yeah. I would never been so happy to be in the hospital. Uh huh. I wanted to stay in the hospital yeah, because somebody was taking care, care of me. Right. And, and I think <laughs> we, we also have to make it make it all yeah. right to know that you don't have to be the strongest person. You don't have to. It, it, it's all right. Sometimes you gotta walk away. You just gotta walk away and just like let me breathe. I, I mean, because again, you have no control of nothing. You, it, it. Sometimes we put ourselves in situations because we feel like that's what they want us to do, and they don't want us to kill ourselves because they're going through it. Sometimes you have to walk away, and I wish. Somebody would have been there for you to just say, you know what? But is that available yeah. counseling? Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. I had no knowledge yes. of that. Yes. It is available. It's now, available. Now, now, I would say, and I, I'm with her. I apologize too that they wasn't there for you, and thank God they was there for you. Yes. Yes. So it, it's sad because that. what I'm hearing is that you didn't have a nurse or a doctor mm -hmm. that had. They were there, the but they were they was they concerned, concerned about him. They, they, they were constantly, you know, yes. they were concerned about him. Someone you should have been assigned him. to you. And, and the way they found out something was wrong with me, I just sat there and all of a sudden I just, I just bust out front. Yeah. And they looking like, What's yeah. wrong with you? Right. What's what you mean? What's what, wrong what, with what, me? What, 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 I've been sitting here all this time. Uh, Y'all been ignoring me. Yes. I'm dealing with this. Like you here. You just you gonna drop this stuff on me. Okay. You just tell you telling me my life okay. about to change right. in four yeah. months. Yeah. You know, yeah. walk out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Now, 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 I got a question for you. In your profession, do you think that the reason they dropped the ball with her and they dropped the ball with a lot of people in that situation, similar? Do you think that? Society feel like you know how they say it's a it take a village to raise the kids. Do you think the village is that they was thinking that she reached out to her church or reached out to some other people that was dealing with that? They think the church was supposed to be where she should have went and got her counseling and help. Do you feel that? I think that I, they just didn't. I, 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 I mean, also a lot of times, believe it or not, when them the ones that they they it's like, I, uh, like folks, I'm just doing, doing job. I'm, I'm just doing my job. Right. Doing I, I'm just going. It, right. it's, 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 it's a rare thing to find somebody, a doctor, nurse, anybody that just actually sit there and play. There, there, there's a person with feelings, yeah. with people with feelings I would say that is connected thing. with this. The doctor, she was like, you've been at the hospital too much, too long. Mm -hmm. You need to take some time exactly. out. Exactly. But I no, it wasn't good because he didn't want me to go home. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> so I had to sit right there. So what I, I had to trick him. So my husband loved beautiful women. 
women. Mm -hmm. So I asked the doctor, I said, if I can go home, I said, give me the best looking nurses. <laughs> yeah. I said, make sure they, I said, make sure that this age limit right here. Uh -huh. And so she set it up. Uh -huh. And when they came in and they started catering to him, he started smiling uh -huh. and everything. And he was like, see you later. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> patients in the world oh. they are they they are some of the worst patients in the world and I mean I mean they get like and it's like they died it's just like oh my god oh. They they die. <laughs> and you sit there like but sir you just is it, it should it, I can't walk I can't be I can't <laughs> do nothing but you know it's just one of those Talking things about that work yeah, yeah. yeah. you don't know what they like <laughs> yeah they don't straighten up <laughs> yeah and, and it's like it's like he you never looks so strong when the women start exactly. coming up in there. So it's like they 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 and they depend on they they depend on I I I've, I've had foreign men, foreign women. Now the woman, she got the it's like I I'm serious, I've had foreign women that their husband tell them, don't get them no pain medicine. And this woman sitting in there with her sisters and her mamas and everybody that catering up, her husband come in, oh yeah. But that's a that's a cultural mm -hmm. thing. But then when it comes to the men, the woman that she washing them, yeah, she feeding them, that's she gon' she gon' run your hair out your head until he get everything he need because that's just the that's just the way. It well, uh, okay, okay. You I love y'all. I love you. I love you. Yeah, I'm gonna you, take care of you either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got that in on the brother, so yeah, you hold that hair a little bit. I had to go in. <laughs> uh, my my producer told me we had a 40 minute mark. Okay. But, but however. Because of the way this is going, I'm not going to cut it off right now. So I'm going to ask my producer and director if we could go over maybe another 10. Mm -hmm. and then I can wrap this up. My, mm -hmm. my director just said, yeah, we can go over another 10. <laughs> so we go, uh, but the, the, the other part I want to touch on is, since we were talking about health and everything else, you know, and let me put this disclaimer down. I know we were talking about counseling, and y'all probably saying, well, why the hell y'all let a cigar shop? I like cigars. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, I know people are going to be like, that's kind of oxymoron. You yeah. sitting in the, yeah, but I'm just sorry. I like cigars. If I'm going to go, I that's why I'm going to go with them cigars. So, anyway, uh, now I'm going to reflect on my brothers here. One of the things I, I started learning when I started hitting that 50 over mark, uh, I just turned 59, uh, early part, well, yeah, early part last month. You lying. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. but uh, anyway, uh, just going, you know, I, I find myself now being more health conscious than I've ever been when I started hitting that like 55 mark. One of the things I always tell the brothers when we get together, even though we smoke cigars, I tell them, listen, hey man, dude, y'all go get these colonoscopies, go get, go get this stuff, man, go get your prostate checked out, you know, these are things, but again, we don't, Two things I want to talk about on this. One, why is this so forbidden? Why is there such a taboo in the black community? So, black men going to, going to doctors, hold on. Why is there such a taboo and why do we stray away from it? Flo family, family tradition. The same way that we didn't go to banks because we saw our family put the money under the mattress. They didn't trust a banker. As you growing up as a and you said men. Now, yeah. when you speak of men, I can't speak in general. I'm going to speak as a black man. Okay. Growing up, the two people that was not trusted in the house was a banker and a doctor. Okay. We, there never was a conversation at the dinner table. We're not, having, we're not saying it's okay to go to the doctor and get some help. It's okay to go see a psychiatrist. It's okay to go to counseling because you're dealing with something. You know, it's all right for you to be weak at this situation, to think that you're not strong enough to deal with it. And so we saw through tradition, we didn't go to banks, they put the money under the mattress, and we didn't go to doctors. My grandmother, God, my, that, my grandmother, God bless her soul, and she was right though. She never went to the doctor, because she said, if I go to the hospital, I'm not coming out. And when she first went to the hospital, she didn't come out. She didn't like it, so yeah. we need to talk to our children and to the next generation to let them know it's okay to go get a physical. It's okay to go to the doctor. It's okay to do this here. You tell your father you got a headache, you take this from cold water. 
Black folks have a bad history of with doctors. Oh yeah, Tuskegee. Yeah, yeah. I, I can name them in my family that I had. My grandmother had diabetes. They didn't give her the right medicine. They gave her something else. She died. So we have a history in our right. black culture right. of not being able to trust the health profession right. because we have always been like, we haven't been anything. And it's just the history of African Americans in the United States. We weren't nothing. We were property. Right. We were property. And guess what? If your property, they probably took you out the back like an old horse and shot you yeah. and yeah. threw you over in a ditch. Did nobody care? Right. They took what we knew from home, our traditional medicinal things. They took that from us. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like, okay, how did they treat us? They treated us right. like, like nothing. We had to work, whether your bones was broken, whether you you couldn't, you had tuberculosis, whatever. You, you couldn't walk, you still had to work. And then when they did they take you to the hospital, you became an experiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at look at all the history. Like the lady, uh, the lady with the cancer, they still they they her family just got money because she had cancer. They took her sales and they exploited it. Boy, yeah. And they still using it, they, but they never paid nobody. They, they we become experiments. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because we in what they say in the black woman is the DNA of everybody in the whole world. So we a whole experiment. We ain't we ain't seen as as nothing. And, and then think about it ain't a lot of us in the medical field. So right. you got a lot of people that already got a disdain or the prejudice against us. So they can they can care less. Yeah. The, you have to really find somebody a decent person that actually cares about your health. And guess what? And nowadays, if you don't find a decent person, you better speak up. I right. tell anybody, I don't trust the first doctor. You ain't doing me right. I'm going to tell you just like this, Jack. I'm going to go down the street and find somebody else because I ain't got to put up with your mess. And that's another thing. We have to speak up for ourselves. Oh, a lot of people are, oh, what well, the that's doctor true. said, the hell with what the doctor said. Look for yourself. And if it don't sound right, go find somebody. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with a second or third opinion. Yeah. Sometimes it's not even the case of, exactly. of the hate that exists. Yeah. You know that exists. Mm -hmm. Okay. The training techniques yeah. are wrong. So my, my brother's a nurse, mm -hmm. and he got in huge trouble in nursing school because they were going through what they teach, how to uh, uh, find uh, your endemic or not. You know, when you pinch the skin, mm -hmm. and if the skin turns pink, you're okay, and if it don't, it's fine. Mm -hmm. My brother stood up and said, excuse me, sir, my skin don't turn pink at all. No, it did Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah he's about your complexion. He's like, my skin don't turn nah. pink. How does this work? So now we're training professionals based on a white Eurocentric idea mm -hmm. of what health is. Mm -hmm. We're not training them how, you look at the BMI measurements and what's considered exactly. obese or not. Yeah. That's different for black folks because black folks care a little more weight. Yeah, they like you. Our women, t our women, <laughs> beyond all that, <laughs> beyond all that. Yeah, I'm I'm not, not, but yeah, but we do. Traditionally, <laughs> traditionally, our women tend to be thicker, right. just by nature. By nature, good thing. My nature, my nature. I love it, but the problem is they going to the doctor. The doctor say you mm -hmm. obese, you gotta lose weight mm -hmm. because you don't meet a measurement that's not based on you. Right. Mm -hmm. It's based on Sally yeah. Mae. It's based on on Penelope. It's not based on Shaquisha. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's so it's not just the the inherent hate that sometimes exists. Between these people, and it's that they're being trained wrong. Lack like of mm -hmm. knowledge. Yeah. Like they, they're being taught right. So they get into that, and it yeah. takes that whole thing. Like, yeah, we, so we don't trust doctors. Mm -hmm. right. well, you know, what, what we don't trust bankers because bankers took our money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Doctors took our money. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to the point now we don't trust police anymore. But if I say we don't leave that story. No, right, just, right, right. No, no, wait, and that that's that's from the son of a police officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, my father's a right, retired right. police officer. But I'm That's saying, a folks on my part. I mean, <laughs> but I'm not saying we should or shouldn't. No, 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 I'm saying this is what's happened, and so we don't get checked. We don't go to the hospital. We don't. We have these pseudo, these pseudo sexual hangups. Then, oh, yes. let's yes. go there because yes. because we sat there, we watched Chadwick Boseman die. Yes. We watched him die. Oh man, and I was like, hey. we watched him. 
Uh, and there's still men who's talking about they ain't going to the doctor. Ain't yeah, nobody gonna stick their finger up my, yeah. my butt. Hey, look, put a glove on. Talk sweet to me, pat me on the head. <laughs> hey, hey, shut my eye. I, I told my doctor straight out. I said what he done. I said we going to real life family. Hey, <laughs> that's, that's, that's 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 we we close out. Hey. We, we go together. You know we need to work this out. But, <laughs> but I ain't gonna, but I ain't gonna die. What? Right. I'm not gonna die. Right. So I'm alright with that. I get you, Demetrius, because it's the same thing. I told my doctor, male doctor, I told him, hey, I like long walks. So. Right. <laughs> you know, hold my hand. Yeah, and so, and then know. on your scalp point, I'm gonna give you a comeback for that. Okay. Tar, nicotine, and the things they add to cigarettes right. cause cancer. Right, right. right. Not the tobacco. Not tobacco. Not tobacco. Not tobacco. Which is a cigar yeah. you don't put in your yeah. lungs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and that's the thing about it, because again, a lot of people don't come off educated to that exactly. point. One of the things that I, 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 I specifically say to my doctor, my, in my doctor's office, everybody knows me. Because, you know, sometimes people think I'm, I'm a little aggressive. <laughs> Get him! Yeah, I think I'm a little aggressive. But, my doc, and I say that because when I tell him, <laughs> hey, when I tell him, he tell me, I said, what's that my point? 130? 1.30, I'm in there. I'm, I'm in there before 1.30. I ain't waiting more than 20 minutes. What time y'all tell me my point was? 1.30. You get paid for this, right? All right, then fit me in. I don't care who else was late. Get me in. I got something to do. And they, they go, and I promise you, when I walk my dog's office and they know they're behind, the first thing I would do, Miss Haynes, we got you. We got you. Or can we get you another day and you cut back and we make sure we get you? Okay. So, again, I, I kind of demand that because, like you stated before, we don't just put that pressure on people, yeah. you know. My thing is, I'm paying for your service, bro. Yeah. You know, same thing with my father. Like I tell my father, say, dude, I'm paying for your service. Mm -hmm. Now, you late, what you, you know, how we gonna work this out? Yeah, how we gonna work this out? Yeah. 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 You know, so yeah. I get that. Yeah, and uh, you really hate the- And you've been kind of quiet over here, brother. I want you to jump in and see. been covering everything, you know, I'm good. Uh, well, you, I mean, you drink it, so you probably been. <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably been out of the conversation since 20 minutes ago. But no, uh, I'm just, because again, I just think that's something that we, is, and like I said, I, I I do it all the time when we, tell, I tell you guys, man, I, like, listen, yeah. man, go to the doctor. And hyper masculinity, too, yes. you know, because a lot of people, I ain't no punk. Yeah. I, what, if, what the punk got to do with, you, like, I, I tell you, I have a lot of young black men that come to the hospital. They, that's when they get to the hospital because they mm -hmm. never went to the doctor. And this is my, this, I tell all of them, this is the funniest thing. And they get big like this, blow. I'm like, you want that soldier to continue to fight in the war, right? Mm -hmm. You better get that blood pressure under control, because other than that, you're going to be calling Viagra, Cialis, Ooh. or nobody at all. Ooh. No, Miss Glo. Yes, I'm Facts. seriously telling you. Mm -hmm. You walk around here, your blood pressure high, you're eating every processed food, Popeyes, McDonald's, yeah. you don't eat no vegetables, um, you don't drink no water, um, you don't do no exercise, all y'all do is watch video games mm -hmm. and stuff like that. What do you think you're going to get? And so as soon as I tell them, your name is Lippy. Yeah. They be like, Miss Globe. Yeah, 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 get yeah, your act that. together. Mm -hmm. Go get, let somebody tell you that your blood pressure high. You, die, you got diabetes, and when all of that get together, that blood pressure, that diabetes, baby, go ahead. Just go ahead and count yourself out. You just go ahead and they ain't going to even put you on no Cialis because your blood pressure too high. They not going to do okay. that. Mm -hmm. You can't do nothing, so I don't know what you're going to do. You're going to be a... Cadillac washer, that's all you're gonna be doing. Yeah, that's all you're gonna be doing. Cause ain't nothing else you do. So when you tell them, you have to, exactly, you, have, you really have to be very graphic. But it's that whole thing, I ain't doing that, I ain't doing it. Why? Why? I would rather deal with it now than deal with it later. Because if you deal with it now, you might got to fight a chance to keep on fighting. <laughs> you deal with it later. You know, but you got a lot of men, they not doing that, they ain't feeling on my prostate, they ain't doing this. That. Baby, come on, it ain't that. It, it ain't. It's not like his hand gonna be in there twenty minutes. You got a few yeah, seconds. Yeah, because if it is, you got a problem. Yeah, you gotta fight it out if it's gonna oh, be no, like that. Hold on, no, 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 no. You can do that. Okay, so your rest of your life. There you go. Yeah, that's that's yeah. it. This was a great uh, topic, and again, we ah oh, man, it's just always always never enough time. Right about that. So, uh, but I always try to end every segment with either solutions or uh, 
st profound statement from my panel guests. So, with that being said, I ain't gonna put you on the spot, make you first, cause dude ain't saying nothing. You, you good? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna let, let you start off with. I mean, really, with, just lack of knowledge and just as you was talking about the black man not going to the doctor, just being educated on everything that's happening today, and that starts from home. Father, did you want to pick up on that? I agree. Uh, I think communication among families and among friends and among circles will change a lot of things. You have to communicate with one another. And when you see something is missing, add it. I'm sure she would be more compassionate if she knew a friend was dealing with somebody with cancer. If she knew someone and her, a coworker, she would say, hey, here's my number. Call me. I would like to talk to you. You know, I didn't have this. You move forward. That's why we deal with memories and things. If it's missing, create it. As the army guy. I love the commercial from the army. Uh, I think it was not the, the army, not 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 the navy. They say if we don't have a bridge, we build it. Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. personally take responsibility for stuff and we have to know ourselves, really know ourselves in all things. I mean, if you know yourself, what, what your strengths and what your weaknesses are, and it's, instead of walking away from it or never dealing with it, deal with it. You have to, it, it's always better to deal with things because then deal, deal with what your, you know, your issues because if you don't, it, it, it manifests itself in other ways whether it's selfishness, whether it's neglect or whatever. So it's, it's best to just know yourself. And then once you know yourself, you can all you can help somebody. You can help somebody. And in our community, a lot of times, also, we're very divided. Very yeah. divided in our community as, a, as a, 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 a culture and a race. We're very divided. But that that's a whole other topic. But the thing is, is that I am my sister and my brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, I, like you said, if you know it, tell somebody, mm -hmm. help somebody. If we came together and helped each other and relate, and like this this podcast, hopefully it can help somebody. Yeah. And again, like I said, I don't know her from just today, but if you need me, call me. Because it don't, it don't it take, it don't that. take much. It mm -hmm. don't take much because it might be some she know that I don't know. So we have to be helpers to one another. And and just realize that I ain't got to be the smartest person in the world. I just got to be available and willing to help. Ooh, That's I it. I'm still at it. Go ahead. Gee, some, some, <laughs> somebody gave me something yesterday. I'm still, it's still working on me real well. Grasshopper. We see grasshoppers out here. They can fly. They don't fly, they jump. Okay. But a grasshopper can't jump backwards. Grasshopper can't jump now. Grasshopper always had to jump forward. So everything we do, anything, we got to be thinking, because nature is set up like that, that we move forward. Okay, okay, I like that. I, I say like somebody that. hit me with it yesterday, damn, they, and it's still, like it's that. heavy over okay. here. I, I said I'm stealing it from him. Hold on, okay, so for my listening audience, he stole it, I'm stealing it from him. All day. That's my thing now. That's my thing now. <laughs> I want to first say thank you. I appreciate you for inviting me. I thought that this was going to be all about me. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's coming. That's coming. That's coming. What I see is yeah. about me and my new friends. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. And um, I, I want to say, I uh, really thank you for saying earlier that you talk to your guys. Yeah. You know, and I think more guys need to come together because girls, we always get together. We have these girls, guys. We talk about some of everything. We talk about health. We talk about our kids. We talk about our men. We talk. But I hear I used to work at barbershops. They only talk about 
Wood. from sports, drinking, yeah. women, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But yeah. I never heard them talk about health. And me and my friends, we talk about all yeah. health. And, uh, and I just think more guys need to get together and maybe do some things to talk about health, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and money. And it just, you know, it does start at home. But sometimes even home is ignorant. Yes. So that's why we do need our friends and, you know, people that we know and need to do stuff like this because I'm sure we all learn something from each other today. So it don't just, not that it shouldn't start at home, but sometimes we know with the homes out here, it is very ignorant and lacking of knowledge. So if home doesn't have it, we can't teach our children. You know, they can't teach the children what they don't know. That's you why know. I said home, family, so, yes. friends, we all and your circle. Circle. Yes. 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 yes, You know, and you have to be my friends, but yeah. today, this is my circle, and I had yes. a great conversation with the people in my circle. Thank all you all, yeah. and thank well, you. Well, well, that that's what I was going to end on. I was going to end on, thank you all for taking the time out to come in and have this conversation. It, it was actually healing. Y'all just really don't know. Oh, y'all yeah. was actually giving me a healing experience. Okay. I just told y'all, um, these guys know me. He know me for a long time. I'm, I'm gonna put that persona up there. But uh, thank you for allowing me to break down and share this with you guys, my personal experience, and my journey. Uh, because yeah, I don't get to talk about that also. And it's, it's funny too, and I'm gonna end on this note, it's funny what you can say to strangers that you can't say to the family. That's true. It's funny. Yeah, because a lot of times you don't get a lot of judgment. So I wanna thank you guys for that. With that being said, we're going to take our break. We're coming back again for the second half. So everybody go ahead and get them, you know, situated for the next half. And we'll be back on the next half. We're going to break at this moment. And I'm going to turn it over in my direction. We're going to see what's happening.